Icons for me are not just icons. They're not just paintings on boards. It actually is a, a living thing and it actually works for a person. Every time that I get a chance to do a painting or I get a chance to do something for someone, it touches them. Also, I put that I mean, emotion inside of it, but I think it's also something from the Holy Spirit that helps guide me. I really want to help people with my work. My inspiration comes from going into maybe the museum, going to old churches, going to places and seeing these original works, original icon works, because it gives you this sense, you know, something that's been preyed on, something that's been looked at, something that's been, been, been touched. The money for me is not the most important thing at all. It's about the artwork, it's about the people, it's about the love. In my normal life, you know, I don't talk a lot. I'm very quiet, you know. <laughs> if everyone, you know, sees me, I'm, you know, that I do not talk a lot. I just like to be quiet because when you're quiet, you can listen. My father used to always tell me to listen because I would talk, you know, I would stutter a lot when I was younger. What kept me going was the fact that I was able to, 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 to hear my father speak and I would listen and I would talk just like him. So my icons are the same way. If I listen long enough, then it allows me to come out with something beautiful. And it's coming from the heart. My name's Al Sauls. I'm an artist and iconographer, and I just love doing icons. It's my thing. I was born actually in the south side of Houston, and uh, we were actually had a really modest childhood when I was growing up. And the wonderful thing about my childhood is it taught me that love is a very important thing. When I was probably three or four, I actually got into doing painting and I started drawing mountains on the walls. My mother was like, no, you should draw it on paper. <laughs> so she gave me paper and she was like, well, you know, go ahead and use this paper and draw what you want to draw. I just drew the lines, mostly like Matisse, you know, and I'd love to just draw like lines. And it was kind of one of those things I just love to do. When it came to activities, my mother would always take us to the museum. And that was one of her main things. She was a poet and she used to love taking us to the museum. When I was young, I was probably around maybe four or five. And she would point out each picture and she would say, well, can you name this artist? Can you name this artist? And the craziest thing, it, it got me into loving art more and more. As a family, as a whole, we basically tried to um, to cultivate art. You know, it's more—it was so important to us because my father was a musician. You know, and he he actually did a lot of music work, but he also did a lot of artistic things too. So it was it was very important for our family to kind of have art in the family. The major art that I kind of actually got really attached to was the uh, religious art. I was just, it was something about it. You know, it was something that really kind of stopped me. And that's what's more important than anything. When I got older, I had a lot of influences, you know, with art, because there was just so many things going on. And graffiti was one of the things that actually kind of inspired me. And lo and behold, that actually was something that I needed as a base in under to understand how to do line work when it comes to doing iconography. So it was kind of a perfect kind of transition. I didn't know anything about where I was going to go at that particular time in my life, but it was kind of planned out for me. It was like a path, you know, and I had to follow the path. There was a lady at that was actually in my class, and she was a really nice lady. She basically was a nun, and I got a chance to talk to her, and she told me about University of St. Thomas. And when I drove over there that time, I got a chance to drive by the school, UST, and I, I, I just looked at the dome. There was this dome that was just 
overwhelmingly gold. And I was just like, thinking, I looked at it for a while. I guess it had probably been 30 minutes. It drew me in. It was something about the beauty of it. They're so deeply rooted in their faith. And it was so, you're immersed with it. You know, the, the Catholic is really welcomed there. And that was really cool about it. So I felt really welcomed. And people were really actually kind of helped me out, you know, within the, within the classes and classrooms. So when it comes to the art, you know, the, the classes there are actually, they're, they're actually affiliated with the Glasgow School of Art, which is great. So I was just like right in the hub of where all the art's happening. The Museum of Fine Institutions is right down the street. So it was just wonderful to have all these different things working for me. The great thing was I was on this, this, this wonderful track. I went to this event and it was actually for students like myself. I got a chance to actually meet different people. I met four or five different people, and one person kind of stood out was Mr. Massey, president of Scanlon Foundation. And I got a chance to meet him, and we sat down and we talked about icons, because he's into art too. So it was a great thing that we got a chance to kind of talk about certain things that we love to do. So I met Al Sauls at University of St. Thomas at a, a special event and had gotten there early. And we got there so early that only the caterers were there and this young man was sitting there at the table by himself. So I walked over and I said, hi, who are you? And he says, well, I'm Al Sauls. I said, tell me more. And he goes, well, I'm a senior at University of St. Thomas, an art major. And I said, oh, I, I'm interested in art. And I asked him, uh, what type of art? And he said, well, I like to do icons and saints. I went, oh, this is very interesting. I then quickly said, I'm going to commission you right here on the spot to paint me whatever it is that you do. And uh, he said, okay, I'll take that. He asked me to do a, 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 a painting or actually do a commission for him. And I was thinking to myself, you know, well, I'll just try this and see what happens. You know, he wants the commission done. So I'll see if I can do something for him. You know, he wants a picture of one of my icons. He never seen any of my artwork before. So it was kind of like, okay, you never seen my work. Two weeks later, Al shows up and gives me this painting of the Blessed Mother, the Madonna and Child, which my famous quote after that was, we're going to be great friends. I completed the, the, the work about two weeks, and I got a chance to show it to him, which was really great. It was one of those things that it was kind of meant to be because he really loved the, the work, and he said, we're going to be great friends. So, <laughs> so it worked out really wonderful. The good thing about that particular meeting was the fact that the, the next day and the, the days after that, I was more motivated to do my work. I was more motivated to do icons. You know, it was like it was meant to be. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me and said, okay, you need to kind of focus on this particular artwork because it's giving you something. Now is at a point in my life to where I knew that it was actually something I was supposed to get into and get involved deeper. I actually got a chance to go to the Manil Museum, which is one of my favorite museums because they are allowed to see the icons in, perf in print in person. It was a moment to where, you know, you can take in part and you can see exactly what line goes with what line. So it was, it was great because I got a chance to paint and draw from what I seen. It gave me the sense of, of I can do this. You know, and that was really important because at the time I really needed to 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 have that that confidence in order to do the work. So <laughs> my inspiration comes from going into maybe the museum, going to old churches, going to places and seeing these original works, original icon works, because it gives you this sense, you know, something that's been preyed on, something that's been, you know, looked at, something that's been, you know, been, been touched or, you know, it gives you a certain feeling, you know, and that's what was so important. It was a total circle of, of goodness, you know, <laughs> if I could say it like that, for me to actually get into experience these different things.
I've actually had to battle with a lot of different things in my life. And that's one thing that I've had, I had to battle with, with how I think about things. You know, sometimes I think a little bit faster than I uh, speak. And that happens a lot. My artwork is how I really speak. My artwork is how I actually speak from my heart. And it gives me happiness. When I'm speaking through the artwork that I do, I'm just like a vessel in a way. You know, I'm a vessel for God, you know, and it allows me to be a part of the story, you know, of someone's life. Because these icons, they, they keep these icons for a long time. They pass it to their family members and they pass it down and pass it down. Actually, something that comes from inside, something that comes from the Holy Spirit to me, you know? I'm just a vessel and that vessel is alive. Every time that I get a chance to do a painting or I get a chance to do something for someone, it touches them. I think it's also something from the Holy Spirit that helps me. I want to give back to the people that need the most help. And by me doing my artwork, it allows me to do that. I'm able to do stuff to help people. You know, that's the true nature of everything for me because it allows me to speak when I can't speak. It speaks for me. Sacred Art Live actually is something that we started, um, I think you say by around maybe 2021, 22. What it is, is actually it's a little group show that we started with four of my artist friends. Mr. Massey, uh, the gentleman that I had met, actually kind of helped put everything together. We had a little show at the UST. And it was really intimate. It was really beautiful because the people were actually really touched by the work that they saw. I got a chance to display some of my favorite pieces. People were able to pick up the work and they were able to touch it, they were able to pray on it. It's something magical about being able to have a piece of work that you can pick up and use every day. So as you look at my office here at the Scanlon Foundation, you'll notice that I have lots of Al Saul's originals. So we got Mary Magdalene, Pierre Toussaint, St. Joseph, St. Monica, and then uh, St. Bakita. Of course, the University of St. Thomas now uses Al's art in a number of ways. Their president's office has several of his pieces. Uh, he has art throughout the school, and it's gone from there. So it's kind of fun to see Al's talent blossom, and over the years, people are starting to love his art as much as we do. When it comes to my work, I do love to keep my work um, universal. I want my work to affect all different people, all the different races, it doesn't matter. I want them to be enthralled and understand exactly where I come from, but I also want them to understand and relate to something of their own race. I think it's important. It has to be something that actually uh, speaks to them, you know, in a way that's, that's, that's spiritual. You know, so that universality of my work, I wanted to affect, incorporate all people and thus bringing them closer to the faith. One of the major things that I'm working on right now is actually working on all the African-American saints. But we're also working on doing a project where it deals with the African saints. And I want to be able to bring the African saints together in one conglomerate where we actually have um, a few uh, 
students learning about these different kind of saints, being able to understand their stories, and then be able to paint the icons at the same time. So it kind of gives them a great educational value of what's what's going on with, the, with these with these saints. I painted a picture of uh, Our Lady of Love Inc. and I got a chance to, you know give her features that actually kind of dealt with most of the Vietnamese features. And I gave it to a friend of mine and he gave it to his grandmother who lives in Vietnam and she was extremely excited about the piece. She was like, wow, this is something that's kind of new, you know? She took a picture and she gave it back to me, which is really cool. I wanted to see themselves within that, within the, within the saints. You know, and once they see themselves, then they can relate a little bit better, you know, especially a young child. Me being African-American, I would love to see more African-American funerals and, and blessings on the walls. You know, I think it would be a really wonderful thing for a child to see that also, too. So I think that's actually what I want to bring about ways of teaching. The most important thing right now for us to realize as humans is that we are going to have to deal with suffering in some case, in some way. And when you paint a picture of Jesus suffering, you know, it relieves you in a way. Sadly, it kind of gives you the understanding that he also went through the same kind of pains as we did. So when I paint my pictures of Jesus and the suffering kind of aspect to them, you know, I try to make it as real as possible. I try to give it, you know, a, a good feeling. But I also want people to have a relationship with that. So I wanted there to be a relationship with the person to their soul. And it gives them hope that, yes, you know, he has suffered also. So I can get past anything that goes on in my life.